everybody's been asking about Edge's return to the WWE and we, we've got several questions. We wanted to conglomerate it into just a little bit of a discussion because we talked about the if of it here last week, I think, on the program before we knew it was going to be a big surprise. You know, they were talking about it. It was it was the rumor was out that Edge was coming back, but we didn't know for sure yet. But I was in favor of it if he feels good and he looks good. And boy, he looked good. Did he not? Uh, he looks, as he said, like he's in the best shape of his life. You know, I saw him in the Royal Rumble the night before because I watched the Rumble with the kids. And A, he looked good, but B, I like that he didn't look young. I like that he kind of looked grizzled. He kind of looked like a guy who's been through something and he came back. Because remember, after he retired, he cut off his hair. And all of a sudden, he was like actor edge and he looked very clean. Yeah. Now he looks like a guy who's who's really trying to get something. And uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know why they're so allergic to to wrestlers with long hair. uh, Because they make them all cut it off and then it looks like they're bad guy at fucking Kroger. But anyway... Um, a bunch of people say, oh, that Kevin Dunn, he missed the spear. He missed the spear. Cause apparently on the live version, I did not see that. Uh, they missed the spear. How did, how, what did they yeah. cut? Well, you know, I think the, the WWE production team is taking a cue from AEW where they just, for some reason, want to shoot the crowd. Oh no. At various moments during the show. And I think that was one of the moments where edge came in big moment, big pop. People were happy. Big surprise of the rumble. And we just had to see the faces <laughs> of a couple of fans as opposed so, to seeing the action. Well, and, and but now, if, you know, if there, if something's Kevin Dunn's fault, then I'm more than happy to blame him for it. But in this case, unfortunately, that is not Kevin. Kevin Dunn is still the head of production. But that call went to the director. The director, the the... I mean, yeah, in Ring of Honor, when we first started with Sinclair, the producer was also the director. And I think in some cases, I don't even know if we had a technical director. He was punching all the buttons, too. But the way this works is the producer is the guy who set, who lines up all the crew and the equipment and makes the, you know, everything. It's a hugely detailed job in television, especially at that level of making sure that that you've got the crew to do things and the equipment to do things and worked with the building and et cetera, et cetera. But he's, Kevin Dunn is not sitting there calling the shots in the truck. That job goes to the director. And once again, if it's low budget, independent level television, and I've done a bunch of these, Danny Davis in OVW was our director for, you know, six years. Uh, you know, when I was writing the show there, because he was punching the buttons himself because it was a shoestring budget, but a real television production, the director also has a technical director and the technical director's job is to actually punch the buttons. The director, his job is to sit there and watch the bank of monitors and determine which camera to take. So in, you know, once again, normal, you know, independent television show, maybe there's three cameras or four cameras or whatever. It's not that hard to watch in the bank of three or four, maybe five, if you got one locked down somewhere. Different camera shots and deciding which one to pick. I know for a fact, and I'm sure it's bigger today, but uh, the best live event pro wrestling director in the world, in my opinion, is Timmy Walbert. Um, he's He's from outside of Baltimore in Maryland. He worked for the WWE for years, did stuff for TNA, came over and did a Ring of Honor uh, clinic for our television crew for me one time just because he liked me um, and he likes wrestling. Uh, But he did a 22-camera live WrestleMania shoot one time. Now, there's not 22 cameras on the ring, but in a live shoot like that, there's 22 cameras in play at least between backstage and the lockdown hard uh, hand or lockdown play by play and the handhelds and the zooms and the jibs and the blah, blah, blah. And that's a hard job. So the director will sit there and go ready three, take three. And the technical director's job is to punch the button that brings camera three up. When, when the technical or when the director says ready three camera three has a headset on, if you got any kind of a budget and he can hear the director talking to him. Hence why that's the director. And when you say ready three, camera three knows he's about to get took. Ready three, take three, then three is up. And then the director can say three, pan left or truck right or do whatever the fuck. 
sometimes there's a bad switch. Did this crowd shot look like a bad switch or was it composed properly and, and uh, they just took it at the wrong time? Well, the crowd shots all look beautiful. It's just they were all at the wrong time. Well, but a bad switch is when the director says, ready three, take three, and the technical director hits the button for camera four. That's a bad switch. Oh, and that's I don't think it was that. I, I think it was okay. an intentional, hey, let's show the reaction of the people. They did, okay. But anyway, um, and uh, other questions. Were, so I think it's great that that Edge is back. I, I think it's it's great that he was able to come back and as he said in the interview and the angle he did with Randy Orton that we're also going to talk about um that he's able to end his career on his terms cuz that was shitty when he just got the news don't do the he's on top he's in the biggest wrestling company in the world making a ton of money in a main event position don't do this anymore now that sucks and he had just right? won the world title i think right yeah yeah the night before the, the, which seems like a curse him daniel bryan everybody you know Stay away from that belt. But anyway, a lot of people asked about the angle with Randy Orton. And this summarizes why I love wrestling and why I hate modern wrestling. And this was both in the same place. And I'm going to illustrate this. Edge has a story that everybody knows is true with all the bullshit angles and so-and-so was injured and so-and-so tried to put me out and blah, blah, blah. They know he really was fucked up. He had neck surgery. He was told he'd never wrestle again. And they know this whole story that we just talked about. He couldn't end it on his terms. So here's a feel-good moment. A main event guy from the past. He's fresh again. He's been gone from the business for almost 10 years. He fucking comes back. He's got another chance at this. He can finish on his terms. And, th and so that's a, a tremendous story right there, and it's real, and you don't get those too often. And then here comes Randy Orton. They were a tag team. They were partners. The rated RKO, whatever the fuck. Hey, let's put this thing back together. And the people are going, yes, yes, yes. And both these guys in the ring, they look like athletes. Like you said, Edge, he looked grizzled, and Orton's fucking chiseled. And they're big names, and they had they took their time, and they didn't sound stilted in their delivery. And the offer is made, and the people are into it. If I'd have been Edge, I or if them, I would have I would have waited till Edge stuck his hand out for the handshake. That would have been perfect. But out of nowhere, out of nowhere, the RKO, boom! He took it tremendous. That's impact on the neck right there. And the people blew, and then they started booing, and then here comes Orton, and now this has been fabulous, right? I have loved this. This is fucking pro wrestling. This is a story. This is money. <clears throat> Here's where it all went to shit. As soon as Randy Orton plants him and the people are booing and everything, Randy starts walking off, but then he takes his time, and he goes back, and he gets the chair. And he comes in and he goes to set the chair down in front of Edge like he's going to sit down, which was a good spot. And then he grabs it and he picks it and he, bam, and he lays it across his back. And Edge is going, oh, oh, and you can hear him selling. Oh, God damn. That was good, too. But he was taking a lot of time, which I'll, I'll explain in a second. Then he goes out and he gets the other chair and he comes in and he does the two chairs Edge's head is on one chair. Now he does the big Paul Bunyan. Boom! The bell. Oh, Jesus! And then he sits there and he just looks at him and he slithers off. And now I hate the whole thing. And here's why. After the RKO and the boom, holy shit! The people are booing you, motherfucker. If he'd have slid out and grabbed that fucking chair and slid back in and done that sit-down spot like he's going to sit down in front of him and talk about it and Edge is crawling to him and then he, he hits him in the back, bam! Instead of taking so much time, because here is the thing now. Your clock is ticking. I used to teach the guys this in OVW. When you start your angle, the clock is always ticking. And where were the people to try to save Edge? Where was security? Where were referees? Where were all his friends and the baby faces in a fucking locker room? Where was somebody that was ringing the bell? Ding, 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 stop this, stop this. It needs to be chaos, not in modern WWE-style presentation. It doesn't. This is what they do, I know, which is why I hate modern wrestling. 
If after that RKO and he'd have slid out and he'd have whacked him with that chair, boom, and then here comes some fucking referees and pickle one off and pickle the other one off. Edge is selling. He's not going anywhere. And they start ringing the bell, ding, 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 and now you've got some chaos. And then here comes a goddamn couple of security guys, bang, bang. And then Edge turns to, or Orton turns to Edge, and he starts pointing his finger at him like, and now I'm going to tell you why I did that. No, as a matter of fact, I'm going to break your neck. And he grabs him, and he goes to put him in the pile driver. My God, the pile driver is obviously going to break Edge's surgically repaired neck. But at that point, here come the fucking baby faces, and they slide in, and Edge bails out with no contact, and the baby faces over over Edge, who's selling and groaning. And you've created some chaos and some movement and some, it was so bland. Nobody was coming to help. Orton was taking his time. And then the second, the double chair thing killed it because now it's a work because unless Edge's brains splattered out and blood everywhere and he went into convulsions, that didn't really happen. And it's not, you don't get the heat from what you did as much as you get the heat in an angle like that from what you tried to do and were stopped from doing, but then swear that you will accomplish the next time. Next time I get you, if you're stupid enough to get in the ring with me, I will break your fucking neck. I will pile drive you. Nobody will be able to stop me. Instead of just, it just was like, what the fuck? It, it's like watching in slow motion somebody rob a bank and nobody's trying to stop them. Did, I mean, do you get that? Do you see what I'm saying? That was my big takeaway is I had three. One, this is taking too long. Someone should run in and make a save. You mean to tell me this whole time no one in the back is sitting by a monitor? No one in the back is friends with Edge? And obviously in the post-match footage, which the WWE released, Rey Mysterio is with him as they stretch him out to the uh, ambulance and Natalia's with him. I know she's a female wrestler, but various people care about Edge. None of them cared enough to run out no, there yeah. and try to <laughs> stop Randy Orton for five minutes while he's doing this. And the other thing, my big takeaway was the announcers. Oh, oh, oh my God, yes. No, they there's didn't say no, no anything. Announcers. Yeah, just, hey, we need someone out here. Someone needs to stop well, him. Get no, out of here. But, but here's the thing, and I was gonna, I'm glad you brought that up because I know why, because Vince tells him not to. Because he thinks, for whatever reason, he thinks it makes it real if the announcers don't say anything. And it, with, with some of the announcers they got these days who sound phony even when they're telling the truth, that may, you know, there may be something to that. But, but no. But that's why, because Vince tells them to lay out. That's modern wrestling presentation, sports entertainment presentation. Awful. But, but, but yes, the announcer, oh my God, why, why? That should have been the oh, question. Oh, can we get Eddie to- out here? Oh, why, you got to stop it. Oh, like, but yes. Yeah. And, and, and register to, because what would happen if, if a fight breaks out in the fucking NBA final game, the announcers don't just stop talking. You know, but uh, no, that doesn't happen anywhere <laughs> other than WWE. But anyway, but yeah, so I loved the guys involved and loved where it's how it started and loved the the root of it, and then hated the way it came off because it's modern fucking sports entertainment presentation instead of wrestling, and it could have been so exciting, and instead it was just phony. But and so for there for all the people who say that I only knock all petite wrestling. No, it's, it's basically all modern wrestling that does these stupid things that don't make sense and deprive me of enjoying what could have been a really good fucking deal. I like what you said. If we did the RKO and then immediately tease the pile driver and then the baby faces run them off, you have the 15 second clip that you can replay over and over yes. and over and over again, as opposed to this endless silent because the announcers can't talk all of a sudden. They're so Jerry Lawler. Is so shocked by this behavior that he can't say anything. <laughs> it's just, they, I like the concept. I hated the delivery and the execution. And I thought it was a missed opportunity, but. Well, and then also, here's the RKO, boom. Chair shot to the back like Paul Bunyan, boom. Then double squashing sandwich chair shot to the head. The fucking guy just came back after a career ending neck surgeries. Yeah. Yeah, they're calling me complain right now. Hold on. 
Fuck off. So <laughs> why would you do all that to it? He should never wrestle again. What are you going to have to do in the future to threaten his neck, which is the key to the whole thing of how you get sympathy on him and how you get heat by working with him is threatening his neck. If his neck stood up under that, what are you going to have to do to this poor fucking guy? And then, and it's going to have to be shit that he ain't going to want to do because he really does have a bad fucking neck. And there was no so urgency. Why? Like, why <laughs> yeah. is Randy Orton so confident that no one is going to stop him that he could just casually... Because yes. he was in, because he was in the finish meeting, and he knew nobody was coming to stop it. <laughs> well, obviously, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I I liked the concept. I hated the execution, and I liked Edge's return the night before in the Rumble. And you didn't see the Rumble, but there was some stuff there with him and Orton. So they kind of worked together, and then he caught Orton getting ready to throw him out, and then he did it to Orton. So they, they didn't even really mention that or anything, but they teased a little bit of dissension slash friendship the night before in the rumble with those two well i th I think friendship's out the window once you <laughs> you know bashed a fucking guy's skull in they should have had a watermelon hidden where when he hit him in the head to just fucking split anyway hey, you never know michael hayes and the junkyard dog ended up teaming up which i always hated years later yeah well that horse had left the barn at that point anyway <laughs>